Ladies and gentlemen, with a new and fresh episode, I Kunal Bhatia and I Anika Chib welcome you to Radio Spark, the voice of Jaipuria. Today, we are honored to have amongst us Mr. Vinod Malhotra, Senior Advisor, Sait Anand Ram Jaipuria Group of Educational Institution, under whose able and sagacious guidance our school has reached greater heights. Sir is an author, a motivator, a retired civil servant. During his long period of service, he has worked in multiple cities of Uttar Pradesh. He shares a special connect with the city and people of Kanpur, having worked here for quite a few years. Sir has a passion for reading mythology, scriptures and propagating happiness. With honour and pride, we welcome you to Radio Spark, sir. Today, we'll get to know you a little better. So let's dive right into it. So, sir, from Gurukul to online education, we've come quite a long way. Today, the educational sector experiences maximum competition as schools and colleges try to supersede each other by bringing in the best technology and pedagogy. Sir, don't you feel that education has lost its true meaning in this mad race to assert Eko Aham Dvitiyo Na Asti? And do you feel that there are certain conventional practices of education that have now gone obsolete but must be reinstalled in modern day education? Very interesting but very complicated question, Anika. <laughs> uh, but I think it's, uh, let, me, let me try and endeavor uh, what I think about it. It's overall the entire concept of education and more important than education, learning. Uh, at the end of it all, uh, whatever we are spent with the time that we're spending in a school or institution, we are actually taking small steps towards our, uh, the, rest of the rest of the life and how we're managing to live. So therefore, it has to the education really has to deliver a very holistic kind of a content uh, to make you fully uh, responsible, to be a good citizen, not merely of your own city or a country, but also the universe. And I think now we are we are escalating the level of understanding of education to a much higher level, not a limited context. See, the technology is something that nobody can wish away. It's, it's happening. You're right, starting from the Gurukul days to the online education, and now that a lot of technology is kind of blasting people right, left, and center. But the essence of the learning cannot be taken away. The, or everything that you do, the systems and processes, whether it's going to the Guru's ashram and staying there, or going through the heart life, or sitting in an air-conditioned room, or in your own home, uh, and getting the online education, the main purpose is not the, the process. The main purpose is how much are you able to absorb. I think this is where the role of a teacher or role of institution becomes important. You cannot possibly... Uh, create a delusion, you know, create, create, create a confusion, and the substantive part of education really has to be delivered. And that, to my mind, is of critical importance. Whatever the pedagogical practices that you use, the absorption, assimilation, evaluation, and understanding of uh, what is being taught, what is being delivered, which also really has to have a very strong relevance to the real-life challenges. We are, you see, I, I mean, one of the beautiful statements that I remember of Albert Einstein, he says, the only thing which I remember after having forgotten everything else that I learned in school is education. So you really have to understand that, that is it preparing me for to be a good human being, good citizen? Am I, am I being of use to society and being productive? So broadly, I think this is what we need to focus on. We totally agree with you, sir. Sir, we all know that you are the one person who is steeped in Indian culture, traditions and values. And you have comprehensively studied the scriptures like Bhagavad Gita, which reflects your extreme love for our motherland and its rich past. But at the same time, you keep yourself abreast with the latest that is happening in the world. So, sir, do let us also know that how you manage to hold on to your roots and yet keep pace with these changing times. See, I um, let me tell you very, very frankly that I try to observe life from a very close quarter. One of the things which I always uh, was taught and I 
consistent to remember that that uh, getting involved into any particular you can, you can you can be passionate about it but getting involved in something getting detached to something getting immersed in something doesn't really take you anywhere at all so there's a beautiful word in sanskrit called sakshi witness you you observe life from very close quarters and without getting completely you know inundated by the several happenings that are you know that you see all around your world this world has several attractions several temptations several imperfections and if you get carried away by these things uh, then you have a problem then you you see that you're not able to really distinguish and find a good way uh, procedure uh, good procedure for you to lead your life so observe life take in as much as you can see i without underestimating the importance of a school education yes you learn quite a lot here but you learn much more from outside from nature if you look around you got to be very the state of awareness is very important your state of consciousness and uh, uh, you know really speaking uh, quoting vivekanand each of us is a potentially divine each of us got that kind of capacity to reach great heights but the question is to convert like they say in physics from from potential to kinetic you really need to capture that that opportunity and there's so much to learn the world is beautiful at the same time if you are able to focus on and able to distinguish able to discriminate able to tell right from wrong wrong then i think uh, the sky is the limit and if you uh, stay rooted to your ground your value system to your you know culture your heritage you know there's the beautiful shlok shayan swadharmo vigno par dharmo sunishtata be completely committed to your own internal nature don't try and follow others let's not try and follow the west in any blind manner that we've been doing for the last many years let's capitalize upon our own strengths and i think i can tell you we have multiple strengths you only got to dive deep into them and you find that huge amount of opportunities huge amount of value system that's available so do that focus stay completely passionate about i am not willing to take answer from people kisa waqt nahi milta aksar wo shikayat hoti na itna sar busy hai itna kaam hai itna exam i think that that's a lame excuse you if you want to do something you can always find the time for it and please do find the time for it thank you sir all i can say is that you're a pillar of the motto simple living and high thinking So, sir, another question for you. Your book Krishna's Enchanting Rhythms of Gita is accompanied with a musical rendition. All the one hundred and one shlokas have been sung and recorded in Hindustani classical music. This clearly shows your love for music and the importance it holds in your life. Sir, to what extent has music shaped your personality? Entirely. I can't imagine my life without music. Music is. is not only therapeutic it is uh, i think it is quintessentially uh, the you know the substantive part of your existence uh, if you you see if you look around the entire universe uh, everything is in this world is musical everything is cyclical earth revolves around sun in musical rotation right all stars move around that i often quote an example and music also leads you to excellence uh one example i want want to give you you have seen cheetah yes chasing a spray yes. when you look at cheetah when he's actually running and on a fast pace he is completely lyrical he is musical he can't he's, he can't get out of steps moment if he does it he loses the prey sheer music and uh, and the great thing about music is music is is science is arts is humanities सारे का मा बधानी सा बट ऑल फ्रीक्वेंसी फिजिक्स फ्रीक्वेंसी तीन ताल एक ताल ध्रुप ताल देर ऑल मात्रा विच आर मैथमेटिकली हैव टू बी प्रिसाइज यू सी वेन आई आई स्टार्टेड लुकिंग एट भगवद गीता इज इन ट्राइंग टू कम्पोज म्यूजिक फॉर इन डिफरेंट ड्रग्स सो बिगेस्ट चैलेंज आई हैड इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी दैट हाउ डू आई कन्वर्ट दिस इन टू समथिंग विच इज ट्रेडिशनली संग इज एंटेड इज ए मंत्रा इन टू म्यूजिकल फॉर्मैट but then when i looked at the you know the the meter where to stop where to begin and how to sort of fit it into the teen tal part of it i realize it's a beautiful perfectly perfect musical composition 
उसमें अगर हल्का सा हलंत है और स्वर्ग है दो बिंदियां होती है ना yeah. वो अगर आपने ठीक से प्रोनाउंस नहीं किया यू गो रॉन्ग एब्सोलूटली परफेक्शन इन म्यूजिकल एक्सलेंस सो म्यूजिक लीड्स यू टू परफेक्शन एंड दैट्स ओनली थिंग आई कैन से एंड आई प्रे टू गॉड दैट आई जब अंतिम क्षण आए तो हमारे मुख पे एक कोई भजन हो या स्वर हो जो संगीतमय है संगीत इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड बाई बाई दाद ब्रह्मन द वॉइस ऑफ गॉड सो साउंड ऑफ गॉड सो टेल यू ऑल्सो इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग वन ऑफ द ब्यूटिफुल श्लोक्स इन भगवद गीता वेदा नाम साम वेदो अस्मि देवा नाम अस्मि वासवा इंद्रनाश मनोष्टमी भूता नाम अस्मि चेतना कृष्ण टेलिंग अर्जुन अबाउट हिज इज परसोना इन डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ फॉर्मैट इज इज आई रिप्रेजेंट द बेस्ट दैट यू कैन थिंक अबाउट इन दिस यूनिवर्स आपको गाय को देखना तो धेनु को देख काम धेनु को देखते पर्वत को देखना तो हिमालय शकर देख लीजिए सो बेस्ट एरावत एंड इस इज वेदा नाम साम वेदो अस्मी वेदों में मैं साम वेद हूँ साम वेद योर नो इज परफेक्ट आई के नॉट एग्री मोर विद यू सर ट्रूली melodies of music are blessings in life so today it is said that happy is the new healthy and we all realize the importance of happiness in our lives and how everything feels complete with a smile could you kindly share with us the most favorite excerpt of yours from your book happiness to bliss what is that uh, one thing which fills you with happiness instantly Uh, everything that I do gives me happiness. Talking to you gives me happiness. Looking at your principles talk gives me happiness. So you see, happiness is not something which is which is there out there. You need to sort of look look for it, sort sort out, run after it. Happiness lies right within yourself. Uh, it's 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 very 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 experiential. At one level, it's experiential, the happiness part. But then I'm not start stopping myself only at happiness level. You ask me about the book. My book is entitled Happiness to Bliss. So what we need to do is to look at look at the bliss part of it. Let me give you very beautiful two words in Hindi or Sanskrit, in fact. Uh, one is anubhaviya. When they say it's experiential anubhav, experience is anubhav. So happiness at a particular level is what is called anubhaviya, and and bliss, which is the highest highest level of. the state that you can be in is existential which is astitva parak that is an integral part of your existence happiness and dhoorte with external connect it's all lies right within us so we don't look for it anywhere outside in fact often you hota hai ko dekha khushi wahan hai daudo wo aage bhag jati so but you know <laughs> something that you got right inside with you, with you. and also uh, one of the very important things to understand is happiness is not Unlike the normal impression, is not in the object of your happiness. I just pick out three, four interesting things from the book, or otherwise, when I normally talk about happiness. Happiness, number thing, is is within you. It's experiential, it's existential, and it is not something which you need to look out for outside. It is not lying in the object of your happiness. Supposing something gives you happiness. Supposing some some film gives you happiness, some good house, a good car, or good pen. Happiness doesn't lie in the car of happiness. Happiness lies within you. And uh, another very interesting statement: You got to be happy wherever you are. Sitting in this chair, you should be happy. Going home, you should be. You should be happy wherever you are. Because if you are not happy where you are, you will not be happy anywhere. You can go and stay in the White House. And if you are not happy. Where you are today, you won't be happy in the White House or Rashtrapati Bhavan or wherever. So, and one one factor I think which 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 I must must mention to you youngsters is uh, accept people as they are. You know, we are very very social people. We need to talk to each other. Aksar Hamar, one of the reasons for unhappiness is trying to find out why can't my mother be like me? Why can't she think exactly the way I do? Why can't the teacher or my friend? They will not. Do you th- do you think do you, are you like them? So you accept people as they are, and don't try to be crusader for reforming the world. I mean, you if you need to re- reform somebody, you need to reform yourself, and I think you you 
acquire a state of happiness. So there are three, four different, I call them uh, fundamental questions or responses that you need to remember as far as happiness is concerned. Stay rooted, look for it within self. Don't bother about the place, don't about about the reason, accept everyone. You will never be unhappy. I am amazed with that answer, sir. I cannot wait to start my journey towards bliss by following your principles. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we come to an end of today's episode of Radio Spark. Today was undoubtedly insightful and enriching. Looking forward to learning from you in many more sessions, sir. Thank you, both of you. God bless you and God bless your school. Thank you. Thank you, you sir. sir, for joining us today. With that, this is Kunal Bhatia. And this is Anika Chiv. Signing off.